Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Out on the Ranch. I'm Dr. Lee, and it is another beautiful day in South Texas, about 71 degrees outside, which sounds pretty good. It would be a little bit nicer if the humidity was not at 90% today. It's a little bit balmy out, but I'm not complaining one bit. Got just a little bit of a breeze, so if that'll keep up, it'll make it quite tolerable. Enjoying three of the things in life that I really, really enjoy. Um, sitting on the front porch of this old house. This old house was built on this ranch uh, around 1940. It was an art studio for a wealthy rancher that owned the big house. And um, we have turned it into a jam shack for my band. And it's got a nice porch on it. And that's, that little meadow right there is the meadow that you commonly see in a lot of my videos. I really like this little area right in here. It's very peaceful and, um, uh, and just a, a beautiful place. But uh, enjoying, enjoying sitting here in what we've always called the good old rocking chair. I'll give you the history on it in a minute. Enjoying a little early morning cup of joe. It's uh, Sunday morning. It's about 6.50 in the morning. And this is Mother's Day. So to all you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. This is your day, and God bless you for what you do. Where would we be without our moms? But nevertheless, going to get to a little bit of house cleaning first. I would like to show you this plaque right here. And I'm not exactly sure what kind of wood that is, but isn't that pretty? This is not a, this is not a layered thing that was put together. It actually grew this way. But uh, Jeremy, one of our loyal subscribers, made this for me. And I, I know it's probably kind of hard to see, but nevertheless, it's got Texas A&M logos up top. It says the characters, and he had a space down at the bottom. He said, what would you like for me to put down there? And I said, run a strand of barbed wire across it. So he put that strand of barbed wire across there. Isn't that cool? But anyway, Jeremy, thank you so much. I really, really like this. I'm not exactly sure where we're gonna hang it yet. I kind of held off because I wanted to make a video out of it. Jeremy also made one for Matt and Merida. And down at the bottom where he put the strand of barbed wire on mine, he put a Barrett 50 caliber rifle down there. Quite fitting, quite fitting. Anyway, Jeremy, thank you very much. I will put contact information for Jeremy down below in the description. Also, one other thing, Jeremy sent Meredith some rings that were made up, finger ring, you know, rings like this, rings that were made out of wood. And here's Addie modeling those. But anyway, those are very, very cool too. So. Also, for those of you who did not see the last video, I announced that Floyd had an upcoming birthday. And you guys always say, you know, what can we do for Floyd? Because, you know, everybody loves Floyd. And my wife had an idea, and that was, why don't you just ask him to send him a birthday card? He is not a material possession kind of guy, so please don't send any gifts. But if you want to send him a birthday card, um, I will be collecting all the birthday cards. His birthday is in the middle of July. So I'm going to collect all the cards. I'm not letting him know about it. And then at his birthday party, I'm going to take all the birthday cards. And uh, let me get my cheaters on here and I'll show you what we got so far. I sent, I, I, I put that video out and on the third day, went to the mailbox and uh, the McConnells over in Illinois had sent Floyd a uh, birthday card. Miss Gibson up in Indiana did as well. The Reynolds, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Teresa in, looks like, Winber, Pennsylvania. Kristen in uh, Brookfield, Massachusetts. And uh, uh, Frank and Laurie up in Washington sent one too. So there were six of them in there on the first day that we could have gotten mail. On the very next day, it was all these. That's probably, I think my wife said there was 14 of them then. And then yesterday, there was all these guys right here. So, so if that continues, we're gonna have to get a wash tub to carry all the birthday cards to Uncle Floyd in. But anyway, I, I think that's a great idea and I cannot think of anything that Uncle Floyd would love better than for you guys just to say, hey, Uncle Floyd, happy birthday, I love you. So. Um, thank you so much for those of you who have already sent those in. Got one card from Hawaii 
already uh, with a beautiful picture of Hawaii on the back. So uh, that, that's all really, really cool. So anyway, if you guys would like to send Uncle Floyd a birthday card, I will send it to my post office box, Uncle Floyd, care of me. And I'll put all that down in the description down below so that you can do that. So my address and Jeremy's will be down there. If you guys would like to get in contact with us. And like I said, this old rocking chair is one of my favorite things in my world. It was given to me by my grandmother back in the 70s. And she gave it to me because she knew I loved it so much. She and her husband bought a pair of these rocking chairs in 1910. That was my grandfather, Matt Carricker. And in 1910, they were expecting a baby within a year, and they bought these two rocking chairs. Uh, somewhere along the line, one of them was destroyed in a fire, and even the runners on the back of this one got burned in that fire, but the chair survived. It did not survive Mark. Uh, he broke one of the runners completely in half on it, and uh, our buddy Andy Rawls, you've probably seen Andy's woodwork on YouTube, Andy fixed it for me. He, he took the runner and perfectly shaped a new rocker out of that thing and then perfectly stained it to match this old, old finish on here. Um, this, when I got this rocking chair, it was green and gray striped, you know, the old antiquing stuff that everyone had to do to furniture and guitars and everything else. Everybody had to paint stuff antique back in the 60s, and this chair was uh, not immune to that either. So it had the ugliest paint job on it. So when I got it in the 70s, I stripped it down and I put a few coats of, of lacquer on it, and it's it's aged and yellowed nicely over the years. So it's a beautiful old oak rocker. And um, it's just one of those things, My all of my aunts and uncles, my mom, my dad, and all, all my aunts and uncles were rocked in this when they were babies. All of my cousins were rocked in this. Uh, most, of, most of the grandkids were rocked in this. All of my grandkids were rocked in this chair. So, you know, anytime I sit in this chair, my whole family's been right where I am right now, and that it really means a lot to me. But I used to go home. Uh, we'd go home to my grandma's house, even when you know I was a tiny, tiny kid. And I would she she would tell me she say you would always say Granny, would you rock me in the good old rocking chair? And and she never said no. And she said she said she rocked me in this chair until I was so big. I was hanging off both sides of it, but Granny'd still rock me. I'd pile up in her lap, and and there was just there was just a bond there, you know. She was one of the greatest grandmothers. She all the things you think about in a grandmother, that was her. She was just such a sweet, sweet woman. This is my dad's mom. It's also Uncle Floyd's mom, and um, and she was just a dear. There's there's grooves in this wood over here on the right side where she used to put her her thumbnail in it and rock it back and forth that was her worry stone and I asked her one time I said granny why, why do you do that with your thumbnail in that wood and she said it just helps me think but uh, my grandmother uh, interesting story about her when she was 69 my uncle uncle Floyd told all of his brothers and sisters we need to start meeting every year on mom's birthday because she might not last much longer and so they started the next year they we all met on her birthday and it was a great time we met in a little tiny house little tiny house with one bathroom and there were usually 30 or 40 of us in there and we would just sleep like sardines in the floor at night i can remember one image that i'll never be able to shake and that was uncle floyd tiptoeing over bodies on his way to the bathroom early in the morning in in his um um i wouldn't say speedo underwear let's call it a bikini underwear but um, anyway, it's one of those things that, that that shatters your brain and you can never shake it. But uh, we, we didn't know any better. We had a good time and it was a it was a wonderful way to keep our family together where we realized it or not, it kept our family closer. So I would highly recommend that to you regardless of how hard it is to do. But um, that was my grandmother. Uh, my grandfather died in 1945 and she, my grandmother's probably 50 years old at the time. And um, she went out in her garden and just dug in the dirt for three or four weeks after he died. And um, I guess that was her way of grieving. And she stood up one day when she was out there in the garden digging and she said, okay, now back to life. And she went into town and got her a job, walked into town, got her a job at a dress shop. And she would, would walk all the way into town, walk home for lunch, walk back to town. 
and uh, and then walk home after work. She had a driver's license, but she never drove. And she walked to work for the next 50 years. She she worked until she was 99, and walked to work every day. So that's that old blood. That's that's the old Americans for you. They 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 were they were tough, and uh, she was as tough as she was sweet. But I never got I never got to see a harsh side of her at all. But anyway, that was my grandmother. This is Mom's Day, and I just wanted to talk about some of the special moms in my life. And she was, uh, she did all those things for all her family. Anytime I was coming home, she would always have a lemon meringue pie ready for me when I walked in the door. And uh, she knew that, and honestly, she always had two. We would eat one there, and then she, I would take the other one home. But she never missed that. She always had that, my favorite pie, and just, uh, just sweet as she could be, hug you and kiss you and tell you tell you that she loved you. And so she, of all the moms, she was uh, she was the matriarch of our family, and there's there's not been a better woman that's ever walked the face of this earth in my mind. My mom next, my mom and dad married when she was 16. She had my sister when she was 17. She had me at 20, and my younger sister at 30. So there were three of us kids, and my mom was always doing the mom thing loading us up in cars driving us around making breakfast making lunch making dinner you know the old 1950s 1960s housewife stuff that's what she did she also worked a lot too and um, she was very loving and very nurturing and just a hard worker she was stern when she needed to be and she was one of those moms where you could walk in and when you'd had a bad day when you know girlfriend dumped me or my boss fired me or whatever walk in there and within two seconds she would say Lee what's wrong let's go sit down and talk and uh, that's that that's that mother's intuition you know she could read me like a book but that was my mom a, a, a wonderful woman who I owe my life to in more ways than just being brought into this world by her which is interesting I've got uh, hooked to my birth certificate is a receipt from the hospital and I think it cost $35 for me to be born in the hospital. So compare that with what you guys go through today. Pretty shocking. But um, when I was a tiny baby, before I was even one year of age, um, I got pneumonia. And my big sister at this time was around two and a half. And so I, I got really, really ill. And every time they would lay me down, my lungs would fill up with fluid and I would start coughing and choking and gagging and you know basically trying to die and my mom realized that and uh, they had taken me to the hospital but you have to realize back then they basically had penicillin and sulfa drugs uh, and probably neither of which was going to help whatever I had so my mom and dad uh, took me and my sister over to my grandmother's house and my mom sat in this rocking chair and held me upright in her arms so my lungs would not fill up with fluid and I would die. My, da my dad told me this story. He said, your mom sat in that rocking chair and rocked you for three days. He said she would eat. He said the only sleep that she got was sitting upright in this chair with me on her shoulder until I was well. And then she got up and took care of herself. Why? Because she was mom. And that's what moms do. And mom number three today is my sweet wife. And uh, we've been married about 40 years now. And um, she's been, just like, just like the other moms I've been talking about, she's been a wonderful mom. Uh, loving, nurturing, hardworking, strict when she needed to be and uh, just a just a perfect mom to our kids perfect wife to me and um, i can remember when i was going to school we didn't have any money and my wife would go to work all day and i would go to school all day and then i'd come home and uh, i bought some old lawnmowers and we'd take those lawnmowers out and mow grass and i can remember pat out there mowing grass pregnant with matt great old big belly out there pushing a the lawnmower down the street and all the people would drive by and look at us like look at those crazy kids out there but you know that it was one of those things where it's just what we did 
and and yeah she was pregnant and and yeah she had already worked all day but she wasn't going to let that slow her down she worked up to the day before she had matt and uh, uh i probably did that with the other kids i don't even really remember anymore but uh hard work and do and she would do whatever we had to do for our family we i was a large animal vet when i got out of school and uh, we had matt and mark at the time and uh, man she took care of those kids you know getting them doing all the things you have to do chasing a a three-year-old and a new baby around and uh you know you know that's just life and it's it's a it's a full-time job being a mom and especially with two kids like that and i was no help i was a large animal vet i'd go to work at seven o'clock in the morning i'd come home six thirty seven o'clock at night and the phone would ring and i would be gone i'd be out pulling a calf or you know doing whatever i had to do sewing up a horse and uh, that was almost an every night thing when i was a large animal vet and and my wife boy she would and again she was working full time and then juggling all those kids around and it was a busy busy life and but that's what she did because she was mom and that's what moms do and then we moved here and uh you know two more kids were born and my wife was still working full time and she finally backed off a little bit with four kids and all still here at the house and uh, and again i was at, you know working sometimes two different veterinary hospitals that i owned and trying to manage that so i've been gone my whole life i, I tried to I tried to make every soccer practice and every ballerina dance and all that, but it was basically mom that was carting them around and doing all that work. Plus, she was doing all the books for the clinic, and uh, you know it's been a it's been a long hard life, but it's been a good life. And and she devoted everything she had to those kids and to me, and toward making our family work because she was mom. So to all you young ladies out there who are pregnant with your first child, you are about to turn into a superhuman. It will not be long. For all of you who will be up heating up bottles at 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning to feed those little babies, to all of you who will be changing diapers all day long today, to all of you moms who are carrying a Suburban full of middle school monkeys around, for all of you moms who are making baseball games and high school volleyball tournaments and all that stuff, to all you moms who are planning weddings for your children, for all of those who are planning graduations for your children from college and whatever, to all you moms who are now grandmothers, just to all you moms all over the world, God bless you. Thank you for all the sacrifices you've made. We all love you and we couldn't live without you. Happy Mother's Day. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to Out on the Ranch, and we will see you next time. Always remember I love you. Bye-bye now.